the Springfield Armory Prodigy. So if you have not seen this or don't know what it is, it is a double stack 9mm 1911 or 2011 as it's most commonly known as where it's got a steel slide, steel or aluminum frame and a polymer lower module so they can fit the big magazine double stacks in there without being too overly thick in the grip and still save some weight. So as far as the 2011 or double stack 9mm 1911, because those terms are probably going to get thrown back and forth and used interchangeably, this is a really good affordable way to get into one. But after a couple of thousand rounds, we need to talk about, have I had any issues, what's currently out and available for this thing, what I've learned about it, and kind of what the plans are going forward with the Prodigy. Welcome back, Lead Slinger. So we are gonna take another good look at the Springfield Armory Prodigy in the five inch configuration, because now that it's been out for several months, got a couple thousand rounds through it. We're gonna talk about all the things you're gonna to wanna to know as far as it goes as reliability, parts availability, and of course the price point that it's coming in at because it's gone down like four to 500 bucks because you can regularly find them for around 1450 to 1499. But so we are clear for the video, this Prodigy right here is bone stock. There are no modifications, changes in springs, disconnectors, grips, nothing. However, I might have some things coming because I really want to try some of the trigger kits and maybe one of those Phoenix Trinity custom grip modules for the metal ones just to add a little bit more spice to it. But we'll talk about all that stuff here in a minute. At this time, I've got just over 2,000 rounds through this 5-inch Prodigy, most of which was ball, but I do have a decent amount of self-defense rounds through this, either a Spear Gold Dot 124 or Hornady Critical Duty or Critical Defense. One of the things I've noticed putting all those rounds for this is the cycling has changed slightly. I noticed in my original video, it was a little slow to go into battery a few times, which can happen on newer 1911 style rigs or 2011 style pistols, because they do require a little bit more break in, a little bit more lubrication than standard striker fire things. The trigger has cleaned up a little bit as well. I got the four and a quarter inch in not too long ago, and I immediately noticed the trigger pull on that four and a quarter felt a little smoother and a little cleaner than the five inch version. So my buddy Jonathan from Tactical Toolbox had my five inch version and he noticed the same thing as well. And when we got on the range together, we compared them and both the four and a quarters appear to have a better trigger than my current five inch. Currently I have just over 2000 rounds through my five inch Prodigy. Most of that is going to be ball ammo, either 115 grain or 124 grain. However, I have a pretty decent amount of self-defense hollow point style rounds as well. Something I've noticed that's gotten better and better is the way the slide is cycling. Now in my original video, the slide was a little bit slow to go back into battery, almost to the point where I felt like I could overrun the pistol, where I was manipulating the trigger faster than that slide was going back into full battery. However, it seems to be that this has cleaned up quite a bit, smoothed out, and appears to be going back into battery much, much faster than when it was brand new. That is something that is really common, not only on 1911, other hammer-fired pistols, but even striker fire guns as well. One of the first things people are gonna tell you if you wanna make your Glock trigger better, go put a lot of rounds through it so all of the parts kind of you know burnish into each other. That's like an actual process that these things go through. So if anybody were to tell you, oh, those 1911s are hammer fired guns, they take a lot of rounds to really smooth out. Well, so does your striker fired gun. I think those of us out there that have multiple pistols from multiple different brands with thousands of rounds through them, you can definitely notice a difference from round one to round 5,000. Um, all pistols or pretty much any mechanical device is gonna follow that trait pattern. So yes, 1911s or 2011s may take a little bit more of a break in process, but pretty much everything out there is gonna get better with time until you start to wear it out. But speaking of all the rounds I put through this, all of that ammunition was supplied by my good friends. The only reason to go to Tempe, Arizona, and that is True Shot. Good friends of mine, big supporter of the channel. So make sure if you're in Tempe, go by, give them some love and make sure you subscribe to their YouTube channel as well. And speaking of magazines, I have seven of them, everything from the 17 rounder all the way up to the big two-way Pez Dispenser 26 that sticks out of the grip. But it will also run on MBX, Staccato and Atlas magazines as well for sure. I know there are other companies out there that people use, but those are the ones I know that the thing will run on. So if you want to do one kind of premium upgrade as compared to the factory magazines, those would be something to look into. 
but be prepared to spend anywhere from 70 to 100 plus dollars per magazine if you get into those brands. Well, to wrap up performance, have I had any issues with the Prodigy? Because nobody gets a pass here on the channel. So I'm gonna roll in some footage here where you can see a failure to feed. I'm gonna run it right through and then I'm gonna roll into some slow-mo. And what I want you to pay attention to is the magazine and the placement of that first round. So to me, when I look at that, it appears I drug the first round forward into the magazine, jammed it up into the grip, and it caused that failure to feed, likely because the round was too far forward, immediately lodging itself against the feed ramp. Now, it is up to you to be the judge on this. That is the only failure to feed that I have experienced since my first original video. Now, have I had anything else? Well, I'm gonna roll in this video here as well and let you be the judge. So clearly it comes out to be a stovepipe, but again, when I roll this in slow motion, it appears to be that when that round was extracted or the casing was extracted, it hit the upper lip on the hex optic, which threw it right back down into the chamber, causing that stovepipe. That is also the only stovepipe issue I've had since my original video. But again, you have to be the judge of that. These are things that happened out there in my testing, they're on camera, so you get to see them because again, nobody gets a pass on the channel. All right, if you like these videos and you find value or entertainment in them and you like getting information that's unbiased and real on things you may be interested in, consider subscribing. And if you are subscribed, double check that you still are. That's gonna do two things for you. One, it's gonna make sure you see all the videos when they come out, especially if you turn those notifications on. But two, it'll tell YouTube to spread this video to more people, some of which may have never been exposed to 2A content or gun content before which probably could turn some of them in our direction or at least open it up to that, which is just a good thing for all of us. All right, now that we are done with performance, I know some people might wanna see all those specs again, but if you want a detailed review, that's in the original video. But for those of you that wanna see it again, here's a little elevator music with a spec sheet. All right, so remember we talked about that trigger being a little bit cleaner now. Let's go ahead and take a good up close look at the trigger, how it's reacting, what the current pull weight is, and then we'll take a look at that disconnector surface, which is likely why the Prodigy was originally a little slow to go into battery. All right, we're gonna take a good up close look at the Prodigy and how that trigger is wearing in. You'll have that standard 1911 or 2011 style take up and then wall breaks right through. Good clean short reset, break. So pretty much everything you would expect. Now these ones are not per se tuned to be custom, more tuned to be duty style triggers. So they want them in that four and a half to five pound range. So we'll go ahead and do three pulls unless I get something weird or I don't hold the back strap safety the way I should. But let's see what we get. All right, so the first one's gonna be 3.14. We'll go ahead and enter that. And unless we get something funky, like I said, we'll just do three. All right, 2.11, that's a little light. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Um, sometimes electronic gauges can be fooled by speed. So let's go a little slower. All right, 3.6, we'll enter for a total of three and a half pounds. It feels more like four to me, but I also wanna talk about that disconnector surface. So. Initially, people were having some return to battery issues where it just kind of wasn't feeding all the way. So this disconnector surface, I know it's tough to see right there, that shiny part on the base of the slide, or excuse me, the base of the frame right there, that is your disconnector surface. So that hits the slide as it's going back into battery. If that slows down the slide too much, being that there's a very light recoil spring in here, that can cause return to battery issues. But as you can see, this one is super smooth. So I know people don't like to see 1911s go like that, but even going slow, it just goes right back into battery. So no issues with that here. I just wanted you guys to see that because that's a normal part that we'll wear when it comes to these style of pistols. All right, let's go ahead and take a good look at the wear and tear here on the Prodigy. And we'll start with that barrel surface you're just gonna see all of the basic normal barrel wear for a 1911 or 2011 pistol in all the same places, across the hood, across the other contact areas out front, down the side. It's just what it's gonna be. The frame rails are showing the same basic coating wear that I would expect at this point. There's no gouging, no galling, nothing going on in there that would give me any concern. The Cerakote finish on the frame and the slide aren't really showing a ton of wear at this time. 
but as the holster work continues, the Cerakote will begin to show that basic wear, probably on the sides of the slide and up towards the front of the muzzle over time, because that's just where these things get worn when you're running them from a concealment holster or a duty style holster. All right, so is there anything I wanna see from the factory changed and what are my plans for the Prodigy? So the one thing I would like to see out of the factory is a little bit of an extended slide stop, slide release there. Now, if you don't know, there are two ways to basically manipulate that. As you return that slide into battery, you can use your offhand like that. I know all my 1911 fans just had a heart attack because I ran the slide forward like that without a mag and with no round in there. It's okay, it'll live. Me, I like to run it with my primary hand. So my hands are big enough that I can reach over and run that. But if it were just a little bit more extended, it would not only be easier to run with your offhand if you'd use that thumb, but it would also be easier for me to use my primary hand. So that is one thing that I would personally like to see on the Prodigy. And at the price point you can currently get them at, which is right at like $1,450 to $1,500, I think that would be a pretty solid value. As far as upgrades go, there seems to be some stuff that's becoming readily available. One of my favorites is gonna be the Magwell right around here. Gives you a little bit more surface area to work with, a little bit of a ledge for that pinky down there. I think Dawson, EGW, and I think at least one other company is doing a Magwell for the Prodigy specifically, which is cool because I'm a big Magwell fan. Anything that can help you get that magazine in there faster, I'm definitely a fan of. Also, EGW, and I know some other companies are doing some trigger shoes, the Ignition Trigger Kit. There's a couple of other things going on there, which is definitely nice to see. There's also extended slide stop slide release, I think from EGW and at least one other company as well. And of course, something that I am really looking into is the Phoenix Trinity custom lower grip module. It's all metal, it's machined, it's a very nice, and I can't wait to try one of those or one from another company out because it completely changes the feel of the 2011 or 1911 double stack style pistol. All right, so my final thoughts on the five inch Prodigy from Springfield. It appears at this time they've worked the bugs out. So I've documented the few issues that I have had, but none of that was unexpected coming out of a 2011 or 1911 style pistol that generally require a little bit more lubrication and a little bit more break in. However, everyone that I know that has recently purchased one, they've run 100%. And there's probably five or six people I know that have gotten either the five or the four and a quarter inch. My four and a quarter has run 100%. And I've had, I think, three, maybe four or five issues with this one, a couple of which I showed you today. So overall, it looks like they've got everything worked out. And that's kind of one of those things that happens with the review game. Usually I've got a test group of one. In this case, I got the four and a quarter as well. So I have a test group of two but other people didn't have the same experience where it seems now just about everyone I see getting one is having a much better experience. Those are some of the growing pains that you can have when you launch a completely new pistol. And for those of you that don't think so, remember Staccato used to be called STI and STI was not known for reliability because I remember them failing on me a lot when I wanted to buy one when they were still STI. But now that you can get these things for about 1450 or 1500 bucks, they seem to be a really great way to get into a 2011 style platform because for that kind of money, you can break it in, you can get a couple of extras, maybe a magwell, maybe a trigger kit, something like that, and still be several hundred dollars under some of the competition. So not a bad way to get started in the double stack 1911. But I wanna know your thoughts. Are you willing to give the Prodigy a chance at this point, being that they seem to have worked the bugs out, those growing pains have been taken care of, or are you gonna stay away from it and wait just a little bit longer? Definitely let me know that in the comments below. Keep doing it out there on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you all on the next one.